So today, I want to talk about one of my favorite places, and that's Sedona, Arizona. I'm going to go through 11 hikes that I've done there. I'll tell you which is my favorite, all the way to my least favorite. Of course, I'm going to save the favorite for last, so you watch the end of the video. But I'm going to do more than just that. I can't go too in-depth because it's a ton of information, but I will say what's unique about each hike, talk about the roads, parking, mileage, elevation change, what the hike is most well known for, but I'm also going to tell you what I like least about each hike. I should add that I've got videos for most of these hikes that give more details, so if you see something you're interested in, I'll put those links to those videos in the description. You can go check those out to get more information. If you have specific questions, leave me a comment. I'll be happy to help you out as much as I can. That said, let's get into it. First hike I want to talk about is Vaulty Arch. What is it? It's a, uh, it's an arch. It's a very isolated arch. Not a lot of people go there, and that's because it's not really easy to get to. You can come in from two different directions. If you come in from the highway, you park off the side of the road, right off the asphalt, so any vehicle can get there, but it's very limited. I would say there's room for maybe six to eight vehicles. From that side, you're coming in Sterling Pass. Sterling Pass is beautiful, but it has a lot of elevation change to it. It's rugged, it is straight up, but it's a really pretty hike. Now, the other direction, you come in on Dry Creek Road. You'll hear me talk about Dry Creek Road a couple of times in this video because it leads to a lot of places. And Dry Creek Road is high clearance four-wheel drive. Very bumpy, very rocky. And when you get further towards the end, it becomes pretty deep sand. Anyway, the hike from that side, once you get your vehicle there, is easy. It's flat, uh, only a couple of miles. I'll put the stats here. Yeah, and that's it. So you can see in the video what the arch looks like. It has the benefit of being difficult to get to and therefore lower crowds, and that's what's good about it. What I don't like about it though, it's just not a photogenic arch. It's really tough to get a good shot. Take the picture from the top, makes it look flat, and getting a shot from the bottom looking up, you have the mountain behind it, so you don't get that blue sky behind the arch. So the good, you'll probably have an arch to yourself. The bad, you won't have a good picture to show your friends. So out of these 11 hikes, I would put Vaulty Arch as my fifth favorite. Up next, Cathedral Rock. So what is it? It is an out and back hike inside Sedona proper to a great overlook between these two towering rock formations. What's unique about it? If you've ever seen those pictures from Sedona with the end of trail sign, that's where they took it, Cathedral Rock. The roads to get there are simple, they're paved all the way couple of different parking lots. They fill up though, it's Sedona, so go early. The hike itself is a mile or two out and back, about 700 feet of elevation gain going in and then loss coming out. There are some sections of slick rock, but uh, you can't really see them in the video because we went right after it snowed about eight inches. Normally it doesn't look like this. It's the red slick rock. So what makes it special? The overlook, the end of trail photo, and there's another spot if you're looking at the end of the trail sign at the overlook, People climb out there to get a picture on the rocks. So what do I not like about it? It's a typical Sedona hike. It's easy to get to, so the crowds. Mainly because of the crowds, I'm going to put this one at 8 out of 11 of the hikes I'm going through. Next up, Wilson Mountain. Now, Wilson Mountain is a pretty difficult hike. A couple of different ways to approach it, but either way you choose, there's a lot of elevation gain. Not a lot of miles, so it makes for a really steep hike. There are two overlooks up there, and they just give amazing views of Sedona. If you go on the south side, there's a parking area at the trailhead right off the highway. If you go early, it gets packed. It's almost always full. If you go to North Wilson Mountain Trail, it's a larger parking lot, picnic area, but it still fills up. It's Sedona. The difficulty of the hike depends on what trail you're taking. It can be up to 10 miles, 2,800 feet of elevation gain, and then lost. I've gone in both trails, gone to both overlooks at the top. I backpacked it, went in the North Trail, had a car spotted, went down the South Trail and out at Midgley Bridge, but it's gonna be difficult no matter what if you're going up to the Overlook. So what makes it special? The views from the top. You can see Balti Arch from the North Overlook. You can look down at Midgley Bridge and Sedona from the South Overlook. It's just incredible. What makes it suck? The one thing I'm kind of disappointed about when I go there is the fire damage on the North Trail. In my opinion, going up the south side from Midgley gives you better views. Going up the north side, you have the fire damage to go through, but you have lower crowds. So pick your poison. Out of the 11 hikes I'm talking about, I would put Wilson Mountain in number three. One of my favorite hikes in Sedona. Up next, 
and I'll probably get some flack for the rating on this, but I don't care. I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Devil's Bridge. Now, what is Devil's Bridge? It's the iconic rock bridge in Sedona. What's unique about it? I'm sure you've seen this picture before. That's Devil's Bridge. So how are the roads? Devil's Bridge is also off of Dry Creek Road. Talked about it. Difficulty of the road, it, it all depends on your vehicle. At the beginning, you come down Dry Creek Road. Dry Creek Road turns right onto uh, Dry Creek Road, which, whatever. If you don't get there early enough, you're going to see people in overflow parking along the side of the road. Turn right. Immediately to your left, there's the parking area. That's all paved. And then they have this row of rocks. That row of rocks is trying to tell you that if you don't think you can get your vehicle over the row of rocks, you shouldn't go any further on Dry Creek Road. If you can't get over the rocks, this is where you're going to park, either out along the road or in the parking area. And it adds about three or four miles down a dirt road to start your hike to get to the trailhead. But that's really how most people hike the Devil's Bridge. If you have a high clearance four wheel drive or quad or something like that, Continue on Dry Creek Road and there's another parking area. Park here and then do the hike. The hike from this point is around three quarters of a mile, not quite a mile to the bridge with 400 feet of elevation gain. That's each way, so double that distance in elevation. It's not really a difficult hike, but it's still a hike. The 400 feet can get a little rough, so you do see some people that struggle with it. I don't wanna say it's an easy hike. It all depends on your ability. So not really difficult, but don't underestimate it. What's special about it? I want to say the picture, but the rock bridge itself is very impressive. You can actually go up underneath it and look at it from down below, and I'm sure walking out on it would be really cool, but what makes it suck is why I don't have that picture and why I didn't walk out on it, and that's... look at this line. Yeah, this is a very popular spot. Probably the busiest I've seen in Sedona. Not a fan. Just for the crowds and the Disneyland aspect of it, I rate this 10 out of 11. This was one of my least favorite hikes in Sedona. I really don't think I'll be back. Really want that picture though. I may be back. I'll probably be back. Next up, the Hangover Trail. So what is it? It is a fairly exposed route, mostly on the slick rock that does a loop. Has amazing views. Well, just look at the video. It's a pretty cool trail. It's fairly unique that it's also a mountain biking trail. A very difficult, extreme mountain biking trail that I would never ride a mountain bike on, but I wouldn't ride a mountain bike to my mailbox. I'm not a mountain biker. Lots on the slick rock, lots of exposure, but it's worth it for the views. As far as the road to get there, <laughs> it's off Schnebly Road. Schnebly Road is a notoriously bumpy, slow, dirt and rock road. It goes up to Schnebly Overlook. It leads to amazing places, but you're going to want the vehicle that can do that. I would recommend high clearance four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive at least, really slow going. It's not technical or anything, it's just bumpy. If you don't have the vehicle for it, you can park right off the roundabout at Schnebly. I don't know how far it is past the roundabout, not very far before the asphalt stops, road gets bumpy and turns to dirt, there's a parking area. From there, the trail is called Munn's Wagon Trail. You can take that up to Hangover and do the Hangover Loop, but it adds a couple of miles each way. I can't remember if it's two miles total or two miles each way. The Hangover Trail itself is a five mile loop with around 600 feet of elevation gain and loss. Not too difficult, but a lot of it on the slick rock and it has a lot of exposure, so keep that in mind. What makes it special? The views. The views from the saddle are amazing. And that exposure, the whole experience, it just seems like more of an adventure than a five mile, 600 foot elevation gain and loss trail should have. Really, the only thing I can think of that makes it suck is all the pink Jeep traffic going up and down Schnebly Road constantly, stirring up a bunch of dust. Part of the trail goes along the road. I mean, it's not on the road, but it's right along it. So lots of Jeep traffic. You, you're not really out in the wilderness. Still, that doesn't overcome the adventure. It doesn't overcome the views. Really like this trail. Out of the 11 I'm talking about, I would put Hangover at number two. One of my favorite trails out there. Highly recommend it. Next up, Robber's Roost. So what is it? It is a short hike to some Native American ruins in a cave with a circular rock window in it. What makes it unique? Uh, I mean, it's a cave with Native American ruins with a circular natural rock window in it. Pretty unique. 
The roads to get there, they're not that bad, except for the very end. I don't know the exact mileage because I was able to get all the way to the furthest trailhead, but maybe the last mile or so, you would want to have four-wheel drive. I would also say high clearance, but I always say that. I am sure somebody's gone up there with a Prius, but uh, I'm not going to recommend it. The overall hike, if you get all the way to the end, it's super short. I don't even remember exactly how far. I think it was under a mile each way with around 400 feet of elevation gain to it. So fairly easy hike, even if you can't make it all the way to the trailhead. What makes it special? I mean, just look at the video. That's really cool. It is a cave with Native American ruins and uh, a natural rock window arch. It's also where a lot of people get a shot that looks like this. So what makes it suck? Not much, really. I guess you could say that it's so short, it's almost not a hike. You go out there an hour, you look around, you get your picture, you're back at your car. Looking at my rating system, I had this at 6 of 11, which really says a lot about Sedona itself. I'm rating this at 6 of 11, and I'm nitpicking just to find something wrong with it. So, yeah, you should probably just do all the hikes that I'm talking about, all except number 11. Next one on the list is Bear Mountain. So what is Bear Mountain? It's a peak bagging hike with a lot of physical challenge to it and decent views. What makes it unique is a lot of people will combine this with Doe Mountain, it's right across the road, get two peaks in one day. When Tina and I went, we got there late, which if you watch a lot of our videos, you probably, that's not shocking at all, but you can combine it with Doe Mountain to get two peaks in one day. Roads to get there, they're paved, any car can make it. So when you get in the hike, it's about four and a half to five miles to get to the peak. It's an out and back. But in those few miles, it has this almost cruel fall summit where you think, I'm at the top, but you can just now see where the top is from this point. You're maybe halfway there. It's a challenge. That's really what I enjoyed the most. The views are good, but they aren't the best views you can get out there. Hangover, Wilson Mountain, much better. But the physical challenge and just the bragging rights for doing it are what I enjoyed about Bear. What did I not like about it? That false summit. That thing is just, uh, that's sadistic. It's just wrong. Overall, I gave this one 7 out of 11. Definitely want to go back and do it when it's not the icy, wintry conditions that you see in this video. I'd like to go back when I had the time to combine it with Doe Mountain, get both of those peaks. I'll be back. Moving on, next one, Secret Canyon. So what is Secret Canyon? It's a mellower version of West Fork, which is to say once you get to Secret Canyon itself, it has the red rock, the stream, the trees, and, and shade. That in itself makes it unique. It also has a waterfall, and if you go back and search around enough, there's an arch. Don't have video, haven't made it yet, but I will. It has this section, really cool narrows, and uh, you can backpack it. Secret Canyon's got a lot going for it. The roads to get there, we're back on Dry Creek Road, same one that goes to Vaulty Arch and Devil's Bridge. And it's kind of halfway between those trailheads. So four-wheel drive, and I would say high clearance to get to the trailhead. Now, I have parked all the way at the Devil's Bridge trailhead and hiked into Secret Canyon. Adds about four miles each way to the hike. Uh, if you don't have a four-wheel drive, find a friend who does. Trail stats, assuming you want to get to the actual trailhead. It's relatively flat. You can go in as far as you want. I don't know exactly how far you can go in. I think you can actually go up and over the mountain and go to the other side, but I haven't done that yet. But it's going as far as you want, come back out, out and back type of hike. Really not that difficult. But what's really good about it is it's pretty tough to get there. You need that vehicle, so it's not gonna be that crowded. What makes it suck? that walk if you don't have the vehicle to get to the trailhead and you have to park out on the pavement adds probably further of a hike down a dirt road than the hike you're going to do once you get to the trailhead so can't really recommend it if you don't have the vehicle to get to the trailhead but if you can get there it's one of my favorite hikes especially if you backpack it uh, i put this one at four out of eleven up next soldier pass it's another one of those very iconic hikes inside the town of Sedona itself, red rocks, those type of views. What makes it very unique is this cave, which I unfortunately don't have my own picture of because when I went there to do it, it is the same day that we did Cathedral Rock, there was a ton of snow. And when we got to the cave, which is on a social trail, not the maintained trail, Tina and I were the only ones that had gone out that far that day. 
It was just too much snow, so we had to turn around and go back. Roads to get there are paved. Parking area is pretty small, so go early because it's a popular hike. Not many parking spaces. Mileage, elevation change, depends on your itinerary. We went a couple of miles in, very little elevation change. It's a pretty easy hike, even in the snow, but that's going to vary depending on what you want to do. What makes it special? It's the traditional Sedona hike and then that cave. Mark it on your GPS, go up there, get that shot. But what makes it suck? It's a really small parking area and it's a crowded Sedona hike. Overall, I'll probably get some flack for this and I deserve it because I've not done the full hike, but I put this one at 9 out of 11. I think that has more to do with me not being able to get where I wanted because of the snow than the hike itself. Maybe take that rating with a grain of salt. The rest of them I stand behind, but Soldier Pass probably has more to do with my poor planning than the hike itself. Did I just say I'm wrong? Not wrong. 9 out of 11. All right, down to the last two. First one, my least favorite hike, A.B. Young Trail. What is the A.B. Young Trail? It is some sadistic person's excuse for a trail. What makes it unique? It goes straight, I almost said straight up the mountain. It does not go straight up the mountain. It has 27 switchbacks. 27 switchbacks in just over two miles. 2,100 feet up. The roads to get there, if you want to do this, are, are easy. It's paved, park. You have to cross a creek and go up the mountain, brutally up the mountain. Full sun exposure. It's just not super scenic and it's, uh, I don't know. Can you tell I did not enjoy the A.B. Young Trail? I did not enjoy the A.B. Young Trail. Stats I already went through. So what makes it special? The views once you get to the top. It brings you up to the edge of the world. Amazing views that you can drive to. What makes it suck? I think I've covered that. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you want the exercise, go for it. But yeah, no, I, I can't recommend this one. I did not enjoy the A.B. Young Trail. Shocking. You probably can't tell. 11 out of 11. Moving on. My favorite trail in Sedona? West Fork. So what is it? It is an amazing hike down an incredibly deep canyon. Sheer walls on either side, mixing the red rock, white rock, has pine trees, creek right down the middle of it, sections that look like the Zion subway. Yeah, it's amazing. Roads to get there, paved all the way, paved parking area, but get there early, Sedona. The trail itself, there's three miles of maintained trail, but you can go beyond that. You can actually go all the way up to around Flagstaff to the tank where the creek starts. I don't know the exact mileage for that, but lots to explore. You can backpack it. You can through hike it. Most people just do an out and back. They go in three miles, go to the end of the maintained trail, maybe go a little back beyond that, turn around and go back. Personally, I highly recommend you at least go a little past the maintained trail. It really gets interesting just after that. You're going to have to wear shoes that are appropriate to get your feet wet because you're going to have to get in that creek unless it's a really dry year. Love West Fork. It's a yearly trip for my wife and I. What makes it special? Just look at it. Yeah, pretty cool. What makes it suck? Um, it's Sedona, the, the crowds. I've actually seen people pushing strollers and dragging coolers in the first mile or so of West Fork. It is what it is. It's Sedona. Crowded area. You, there are ways around the crowds. You just got to work a little harder. But if you haven't checked out West Fork, put it high on your list. My favorite hike out there, one out of 11. So that's it. 11 trails in Sedona ranked. So much to explore out there. I've only just scratched the surface, but hopefully you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll get back to you. That's it. We're done here.